Yeah, the, uh, they changed the Canada Cup, actually the World Cup, you know, that was the first year of it, 96, and we had a group of American players that were all reaching their prime or in their prime and had uh, kind of grown up together. And, and so we, we felt very confident going into the tournament and we gained confidence throughout and we played Canada in a few exhibition games and had done well and been a few fights and we finally had like big guys that were good players. And, um, so we went into the finals best of three against Canada and lost the first game in Philly in overtime and now we got to go to Canada and to Montreal and win two games and we won that first one went into that second one and uh, Mike Richter was unbelievable stopped like 20 21 shots in the second period we were still behind in the third um, tied it up you know with like five minutes to go and scored a couple more after that and it was a special time you know we we continue to go on as a group together and play in some Olympics together but uh, that was, uh, you know, it, it, it's as big, um, not quite as 1980, but in USA Hockey, we get all the professionals together, and uh, it was a big victory for the U.S., and to be a part of that was a big deal. Matt? Back left corner over here. All right. Uh, this question's for Brian. Um, why no playoff beard ever? <laughs> <laughs> it used to itch the heck out of me, you know, and uh, I'd grow it, and so... And Mess had had enough of the uh, playoff beard by the time he was. At one point, Mess was in the finals seven of his first 15 years in the league or 14 years in the league. And so by the time he was in New York, he's like, ah, it doesn't matter. He goes, we've got to win it on the ice. <laughs> doesn't matter what you do. And I was like, thank goodness. I'm not growing that beard. It drives me crazy. <laughs> so we just and then everyone on the team. We only had a few guys that went with it. So it was uh, not a big deal. Hey, Don. Hey, Brian. Uh, Mike Miller from BronxGoblin.com. Um, I'd like to ask a question about the Simpsons, but my friends would kill me to Don. So <laughs> I'll, ask, I'll ask a serious question. Do you ever see yourself in 5, 10, 15 years back in New York, which you called home, um, coaching the Yankees? Well, for me, I, I'm going to leave everything open because, you know, again, I, I, I love it here. But right now I, I look at things like, you know, this – I'm, I'm with the Dodgers at that point, and I'm glad I'm in another league so I don't have to worry about the Yankee fans and all that stuff. <laughs> so it's nice to be at least going against the Mets. But uh, for me, <laughs> you know, uh, so, you know, you never say never. You, you hope the doors are open, you know, but um, situation I really want to establish myself, uh, you know, put the best team we could put, put, on, put on the field out there, create a, you know, kind of add on to that the kind of the tradition of the Dodgers and that organization and, and really really try to establish myself I really want to you know obviously I want to do a good I want to do a great job you know I don't want to get the players playing the game and um, so I, you know, I don't want to look into the future really now now today today what I got to do today and tomorrow just prepare 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 really what can the fans expect? What can you expect out of your Dodgers this year in terms of, you know, what goals are? I mean, we know everybody wants to win a World Series, but. Well, that's it right there. I mean, every decision that, that you know, I talked with Ned after the season, I, you know, I told him, I said, I feel like every decision we make is about winning a World Series. And uh, I think that's what it's all about, right? It's what everybody wants to see. It's what players want to see. It's what players want to do. It's what the fans want to see, it's what the organization wants. So to me, every decision we make is about winning a World Series. Now, once that's said and that's done and this is where you're trying to go, then it becomes part of a, I mean, there's a process that it takes to get there. You know, everybody wants to get there. Everybody would like to get there. But are you willing to do what it takes to get there? And that's the story. For me, it's the process. And I'm sure Brian, same way. Everybody wants to win. A lot of guys say they want to win. Are they willing to pay the price this guy paid to win? Are they willing to, to concentrate when they get to spring training? Are they willing to be in shape when they get to spring training? When it's cold and, and they get, they're facing Lincecum or whoever they're facing, are they willing to not make excuses? Are we willing to do that? You know, so I'm worried about the process that we're going to have, what we're going to have to do every day to get there. And it's not a trick how you get there. It's playing the best baseball. It's being ready to play. It's being tougher than the other guy, better shape than the other guy, being willing to do what he won't do. So... I'm worried about the process after we've said this is what we're after. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, we got to pay the price. Matt. Over here to the right, near the back. I flip okay. sides on you. Uh, this question's for Donnie. Um, 
You're one of the most respected players in baseball. Even with the Red Sox fans, they have nothing bad to say about you. I was just wondering what your experience with those fans are. Really, I, I like, I love playing against the Red Sox, to be honest with you. Um, I like the rivalry. I think the players actually enjoy those kind of series because even though it's hyped up or whatever and, and the fans really get into it, uh, I think when you go into Boston, it's crazy. There's nothing better than going into a place and they're all over you as a player. When they're just kind of like trying to get under your skin and you're able to just go, you know, yeah, look at you, fuck you, and fuck you. How you doing? Fuck you, too. Uh, when you're able to say that under your breath, you know, and that's kind of what it is. You're on the road, and you smile at them, and you wave, and say, yeah, you, you too. And, uh, but you kind of take that attitude, you know, and it's fun. And those, I think guys that like to play aren't afraid of the field. The field don't change. The, the rink doesn't change. Yeah, well, maybe it does in hockey a little bit, right? Some rinks are smaller. Used to, but now we're pretty uniform. much uniform. Yep. Well, so, I mean, you, you, let, me, let me ask both of you this question, just taking it a step further. And you know when you go into enemy territory, because – the people who come in to New York get the same thing. I mean, you're at first base, you're on the ice, fans close to the ring. I mean, they're talking about your ancestry, your mother, your sexuality, everything. When does it get, does it ever get to a point where it gets under your skin and, and it affects your concentration on a diamond and on the ice? Those are the home fans you're talking about? <laughs> Yeah, I get well. That they say New York's the best place to win, worst place to lose. But well, no, the, in particular, well, you know, any place. Well, I, I always felt that plexiglass was a big help. You know, having it around the <laughs> rink, it really uh, you felt a little bit more sheltered than you guys having to walk back to the dugout and sit on the on deck circle, especially on away places. But um, it was it's all part of it. I agree completely with what Donnie said. I remember skating around the old uh, Spectrum in Philly and just kind of laughing, adrenaline laughing, because the whole place was going crazy, you know, against you, and yet you were excited, you know, you're like, here you go, you're not ready for this one, you're never ready to play. And thinking about, thinking of Donnie saying that, you know, I was getting chills kind of thinking about it, I was like, yeah, it used to be crazy at some of these places, but, you know, it got you up for it, and you were excited to go, and those games were not, were not uh, hard in the fact that you just went out and you just played and played. Some other games became harder, and it's just all part of it. You get used to it as the years go by. It doesn't become a uh, distraction. It becomes a distraction when you're losing because it just adds to what's going on. But uh, usually it's not that big a deal. Yeah, I, I, I can relate just for, from a media standpoint. You go into enemy territory, and you're from New York, and you're doing a, a live shot outside the enemy stadium. In particular, if your team won that day, honest to God, this happened to us. We were in Cleveland for a, a playoff game. And we're doing a live shot across the street from the Jake. Now, across the street from the Jake was the Gund Arena. And as we're getting ready to do the live shot, and the Yankees won that day, the arena is emptying. It's not emptying from a basketball game or a hockey game. It's emptying from a WWF night. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Beyond the shadow of a doubt, the scariest night I've had in my career. I heard stuff that I, I'd be embarrassed to say, and that's saying a lot. 